Welcome to Oral Pathology, Chapter 1, Introduction to Preliminary Diagnosis of Oral Lesions. Chapter 1 is divided up into three lectures. This is Lecture 1 of 3, which covers slides 1 through 29. This section will cover the vocabulary. Lecture two will go over the diagnostic process, and lecture three will cover the variants of normal and benign conditions of unknown cause. The vocabulary is extremely important in describing the clinical appearance of soft tissue lesions, soft tissue consistency, the color of the lesion, the size of a lesion, the surface texture, and radiographic terms are used to describe lesions that occur in bone. We will begin by describing the clinical appearance of soft tissue lesions. A bulla is a circumscribed elevated lesion that is greater than five millimeters in diameter. It usually contains serous fluid and looks like a blister. The picture on the right shows the bully that are associated with erythema multiforme. Bulla is a singular term. Bully is the plural form. The next clinical appearance is a lobule. A lobule is a segment or lobe that is part of a whole. These lobes sometimes appear fused together. The picture on the right shows the lobulated torus palatinus. The next term is macule. A macule is an area that is usually distinguished by a color different from that of the surrounding tissue. It is flat and does not protrude above the surface of the normal tissue. A freckle is an example of a macule. The next term is papule. A papule is a small, circumscribed lesion, usually less than one centimeter in diameter. It is elevated or protrudes above the surface of normal surrounding tissue. The picture on the right shows the skin papules of lichen planus. Soft tissue lesions can also appear as pustules or vesicles. Pustules are variously sized, circumscribed elevations containing pus. A vesicle is a small, elevated lesion less than one centimeter in diameter that contains serous fluid. A pedunculated lesion appears to be attached to the underlying mucosal tissue by a stem-like or stalk-like base, similar to that of a mushroom. The picture on the right shows the arrow pointing to the stalk-like base. Sessile describes the base of a lesion that is flat or broad instead of stem-like. The image on the right shows a fibroma with a sessile base. It is important to note the soft tissue consistency. Consistency is evaluated by palpation, which means that you feel it with your fingers to determine the texture of the area. Descriptive terms for palpation are soft, firm, semi-firm, and fluid-filled. These terms also describe the consistency of a lesion. A nodule is a palpable, solid lesion up to one centimeter in diameter found in soft tissue. It can occur above, level with, or beneath the surface of the skin. 
Lesion colors are extremely important to note. The most frequently used color descriptions are red, pink, salmon, white, blue-black, gray, brown, and black. Erythema is a form of a red lesion, which is an abnormal redness of the mucosa or gingiva. Pallor is another way of saying pale and describes pale looking skin or mucosa. The color is used to identify specific lesions and may be incorporated into general descriptions. Erythroplakia is a clinical term used to describe an oral lesion that appears as a smooth red patch or granular red and velvety. It's less common than a leukoplakia, and 90% of erythroplakias demonstrate epithelial dysplasia or squamous cell carcinoma. The image on the right shows a squamous cell carcinoma on the left side of the soft palate and the fossies. Leukoplakia is a clinical term for a white, plaque-like lesion on the oral mucosa that cannot be rubbed off or cannot be diagnosed as a specific disease. On the right is an image showing leukoplakia associated with chewing tobacco. It is also very important to note the size of a lesion so that the lesion can be tracked over time and increase in size or decrease in size can be noted. Lesions are measured using the metric system either in millimeters or centimeters. Millimeters can be measured using the periodontal probe. Here are some examples of noting measurements of lesions. The sample on the upper left is a nodule that has been excised and is photographed next to a centimeter ruler to indicate the size. On the upper right, a millimeter perioprobe is being used to measure a sessile lesion. On the radiographs on the lower right, a gutta percha point and a periodontal probe are being used to indicate where the lesion is. The surface texture of the lesion also needs to be noted. Words such as corrugated, meaning wrinkled, fissured, meaning that it has a cleft groove or has a prominent depth, papillary, which resembles small nipple-shaped projections or elevations found in clusters, or it can be simply smooth, rough, or folded. Radiographic terms used to describe lesions in bone. A coalescence is the process by which parts of a whole join together or fuse to make one. The radiograph on the right shows an ameloblastoma with multilocular radiolucencies that have coalesced to form a whole. A diffuse radiolucency describes a lesion with borders that are not well defined making it impossible to detect the exact parameters of the lesion. This can make treatment much more difficult and depending on the biopsy results, more healthy tissue will need to be removed, making the procedure much more radical. Multilocular describes the lesion that extends beyond the confines of one distinct area. It is defined as many lobes or parts that are somewhat fused together. A multilocular radiolucency is sometimes described as resembling soap bubbles. The radiograph on the right shows a multilocular radiolucency from an odontogenic keratocyst. 
A radiolucent lesion is one that is black or dark on a radiograph. Radiant energy can pass through these structures because they are less dense, such as the pulp tissue indicated by the red arrow in the radiograph on the right. Radiopaque describes the light or white area on a radiograph that results from the inability of radiant energy to pass through the structure. The more dense the structure, the more light or white it appears on the radiograph. Notice the radiolucent lesions and the radiopaque amalgam restorations on the teeth on the radiograph on the right. Mixed radiolucent and radiopaque lesions show a mixture of light and dark areas. This could denote a stage in lesion development. Root resorption shows radiographically that the apex of the tooth appears shortened or blunted and irregularly shaped. This generally occurs as a response to stimuli, which can include a cyst, a tumor, or trauma. External root resorption is caused by tissue that is outside of the tooth, such as the periodontal ligament. These types of lesion are pathological, and usually the tooth needs to be extracted. Internal root resorption is triggered by pulpal tissue within the tooth. In this radiograph, the pulpal area can be seen as a diffuse radiolucency beyond the confines of the normal pulp area. These lesions are also pathological, but may be treated by root canal therapy, which removes the pulpal tissue from the tooth. Scalloping around the root a radiolucent lesion that appears to extend up the periodontal ligament and between the roots is referred to a unilocular lesion has one compartment or unit that is well defined or outlined as in a simple radicular cyst. The term well circumscribed is used to describe a lesion with borders that are specifically defined and in which one can clearly see the exact margins and extent of the lesion. This concludes Lecture 1. Please see Lecture 2 next.